Hi everybody, in this session we are going to go over JavaScript statements and see in detail on what we mean by statement. So for this exercise we are going to be going over all the statements that we write in our JS bin. So uh, I will be sharing this URL with you and you can play along as you want. I will give you a starting URL as well as an ending URL so you know what you need, what you will be ending up by the end of the session. So let's get started. So what is a statement? We already discussed that statement is nothing but a set of instructions that will be executed by the web browser. So if you recollect, there were four ways of outputting our content onto JavaScript. So let's use the most commonly used, which is console.log. So let's try and output something onto the screen and say, Hello, I am a statement. Now let's try to run it and see what happens. Voila, the statement gets printed. So this is a statement. As simple as that. I gave an instruction, the browser outputted the content onto the console. The next thing we're going to see is what is a JavaScript program. So most JavaScript programs contain many JavaScript statements. The statements are executed one by one in the same order as they are written. Let's try to write an example where we will have a variable x which is assigned a value of 5, variable y which is assigned a value of 6, we have a variable z which is pretty much an addition of x plus y and now let's try to put uh, this value of z onto the console. Let's do a console.log and pass in z. Now let's quickly clear the console and run it. And you can see the value is 11. Now if you recollect, we had also seen that we can use operators which is arithmetic operators for strings like uh, adding the strings as well as numbers. So let's try to put that to use as well and see what happens. So you can see I have two things, one a string literal and two a variable. Now if you recollect we did an addition to add them. Let's see what happens when we add a string and a number. Let's clear the console and let's just output it. So if you note that when I have a string literal and a variable which is of type number, the value is converted to a string or a text. Now to make it look a little better, I'll just give a space and you can see the entire thing is a string. Now uh, JavaScript programs are often called as JavaScript code. So there's no difference, it's just like how, uh, what type of person you're talking to and what that person has gone through or what he's been familiar with, they'll address it as JavaScript program or a JavaScript code. The next thing is to see the use of semicolons. We talked briefly about what a semicolon is. It's basically the end of a statement. So let's try to put this and see what happens. Variable a equals to 1 semicolon. Variable b is equal to 2 semicolon. And let's say variable c is equal to a plus b. Now let's try to output the same console and see what happens with variable c. Let's try and run it and see what happens. There is an error because I mistyped it. So let's make it console.log clear run. 3. So the value is correct and everything is treated separately. Now let's try to do the same thing on an, a same line. And let's say a is equal to 5 semicolon, b is equal to 6 semicolon, and c is equal to a plus b semicolon. And now let's write console.log c. Let's see what happens now. And the answer is 11. So you saw it doesn't matter if you put it in a separate line but as long as you have a semicolon after the statement it will be considered as a separate instruction or a statement for the JavaScript code. 
The next is the white space. So if you note, when I have been writing variable c is equal to a plus b, I have left a space between the operators. Now, the JavaScript will work with or without the space. So, let's try this. Let's assign the value of x plus a to c and let's console.log value of c. Let's see what happens. And now I have left no space between them and the answer is 10, which is absolutely correct. So it doesn't matter where you put the space in a statement. However, there is a good practice that you put spaces between your operators. So for example, you have a variable m is equals to a plus y. So if you can see, I have left space between the operators as year as well as year. At times, it may happen that you have a very long statement and it spreads across multiple lines. So in that case, the very good example or very good practice is to not have more than 80 characters in a single line for readability purposes. So let's say I have a variable n which is equal to a plus b plus x plus y plus c and then repeat the entire thing once again. So now you can see that my statement is running into another line. What should I do? So the best practice is to put an enter or a new line when you have an assignment operator or in fact any operator. So let's say in this example, if this string goes on to the next, next line, what I would do is I would just put a, put a new break out here. So that way I know that this is a new line and the operator is where it gets broken. JavaScript code blocks. So what is a code block? A code block is anything which is enclosed in a curly braces. So anything which is enclosed in a curly braces is a code block. The purpose of code block is to define statements to be executed together. One place where you will find the code blocks together in JavaScript is in the functions. And if you recollect, we already did an example with the functions. So let's try to write another function, which is add to numbers. That will be the name of my function. And I'll give an open and close curly brace. Now what I do in this function is I will assign a variable x equals to 10. Variable y is equal to 20. And variable z is equal to 30. Or probably I'll do x plus y. Now, I will try to output console.log and say output z. Now, if you note, there are two things. Here you have x, y, z assigned. You ha already have variables x, y, and z. And you also have another set of variables x, y, z in the function. Now, the moment you, dis the moment you have a code block, or a function, the variables which are declared inside the function are local to that function, which means they can only be accessed within that function block. So it will not be overwritten or it will not hinder the performance of these particular variables, which is already defined. So let's try to output and let's see what happens. Well, I don't see a 30 out here. Well, the answer is this code blocks needs to be executed. I don't see a 30 output it. So what does that mean? It means that this code block is just sitting in there, but it's never been called. So let's try to call a function. And this is the way you call a function. Just the way we did console.log, we do add numbers. And let's save this. Now let's try to create the console and run it again. And here you can see the output 30 is on the screen. So that's how you execute code blocks. The other important aspect of statements is keywords. So what are keywords? Keywords are nothing but reserved words that are used by the JavaScript language and they cannot be used 
in your program for your custom purposes like naming a variable. So what are these keywords? So let's see an example. In fact the whole list. One, it's break. What does a break do? It terminates or a switch or a loop. Well don't worry about what it does but just know that break is a keyword and you cannot use break alone. You can use a word like breakthrough, break free but you cannot use break as a word in your variable or declaration. Similarly, we have continue, debugger, do, while, for, function, if, else, return, switch, try, catch, and last but not the least, our variable declaration, var. So these keywords cannot be used in your program.